On September 24, 1896, Francis Scott Key Fitzgerald is born in St. Paul, Minnesota, the third of five children born to Edward Fitzgerald and Mary McKillian. Scott and his sister Annabelle are the only two Fitzgerald children to survive infancy. Despite several attempts to make it big in the furniture business, his father never really achieved the success he hoped for. Fitzgerald lived comfortably in an upper-class Midwestern life, but he never shook the sense that he was a poor boy. In 1908, Fitzgerald enrolls at St. Paul Academy. At the age of 14, F. Scott Fitzgerald appears in print for the first time. He published short stories in St. Paul Academy. In September 1913, Fitzgerald enters Princeton University with the class of 1917. In his sophomore year, Fitzgerald amps up his involvement in Princeton's literary scene with contributions to the Princeton Tiger and the Triangle Club. Fitzgerald meets Ginevra King, his first serious love interest and a major influence on several female characters in his later fiction. They dated, but they soon broke up. On academic probation and close to flunking out of Princeton, Fitzgerald takes a commission as an infantry second lieutenant in the U.S. Army and leaves school to report for duty at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. He never graduated from Princeton. Fitzgerald's first unpublished novel was called The Romantic Egoist. He was convinced he was going to die in the war and imagined this novel as his goodbye letter to the world. Ironically enough, he didn't even go to war. World War I ended on November 11th, 1918. Fitzgerald soon meets Zelda Sayer at a country club dance in Montgomery, Alabama. He immediately fell in love with her and as soon as he was discharged from the army in February, he hoped to marry Zelda. In June, Zelda breaks the engagement due to Fitzgerald's lack of fame and wealth. Fitzgerald quits advertising, moves in with his parents in St. Paul, and goes to work rewriting The Romantic Egoist. After rewriting The Romantic Egoist, he renamed the novel This Side of Paradise. This Side of Paradise was a huge success and as soon as he had the money, he went back and married Zelda Sayer. On March 26, 1920, he married her in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. The newlywed Fitzgeralds depart for their first trip to Europe. They spend three months in England, France, and Italy before returning to the US. The Fitzgeralds first child is born, a daughter named Scott, also known as Scotty Fitzgerald. Before settling in Paris, one of Fitzgerald's greatest works, The Great Gatsby, is published. The book did not sell so well because the Great Depression had started. People did not want to read about wealthy people and parties. This quote by Fitzgerald, show me a hero and I'll write you a tragedy, sets it perfectly for The Great Gatsby. The main character, Jay Gatsby, reflects Fitzgerald in a large way because of his love life. Like Fitzgerald, Jay Gatsby had to wait to get married to Daisy because he was in the war. The quote signifies that Fitzgerald had the power to write about a character as charming as Gatsby, but also make it a tragedy. In 2013, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire, The Great Gatsby hits theaters and is a huge hit portraying Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby. In the novel, we see the world in Nick Carraway's perspective. Jay Gatsby, originally named James Gatz, was a poor boy who grew up and ran away from his home. When he ran away, he met a stranger who was wealthy and saved him from his sunken ship. As he was growing up, Jay Gatsby attended Oxford University and then went to war. Jay Gatsby fell in love with Daisy, who was soon married to Tom Buchanan. A major reoccurring theme is the green light. The green light symbolizes hope, envy, and what Gatsby believed in. He believed in it because he wanted to love Daisy, even though she was married. Jay Gatsby threw massive parties only because he wanted Daisy to come in 
In the end, the great Gatsby ends in tragedy. Jay Gatsby gets shot for something he did not do. Fitzgerald continues writing his novels, and he even sought influence from Ernest Hemingway. During this time in Europe, Fitzgerald's wife, Zelda, was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Fitzgerald soon travels to the French Riviera, and that is where he opens up his next novel, Tender is the Night. The main character, Dick Diver, attended Yale, was a Rhodes Scholar, and then moved to Vienna to study clinical psychology. Dick immediately falls in love with Nicole Warren, a patient of Dick's, who was diagnosed with schizophrenia at a young age. Dick realizes his world is falling apart. With Nicole's schizophrenia, Dick was a heavy drinker, just like Fitzgerald. In the end, Dick and Nicole have a divorce, and Nicole falls in love with another man. Dick is lonely now. While writing this novel, Fitzgerald's wife Zelda was on her third mental breakdown. That is why he wrote about Zelda and Nicole having schizophrenia. Dick Diver was known to be a heavy drinker, and Fitzgerald was a heavy drinker as well. This quote by Fitzgerald, writers aren't exactly people, they're a whole bunch of people trying to be one person. It means that he can incorporate different types of point of view in his stories like he did with this one. A couple of years go by and Fitzgerald moves to Hollywood while his wife Zelda is committed to Highland Hospital Mental Asylum in Asheville, North Carolina. His career with movie making ended terribly and it was a failure for Fitzgerald. On December 21st, 1940, F. Scott Fitzgerald dies of a heart attack at Sheila Graham's Hollywood, California apartment. He is buried in Rockville, Maryland, where his father was born. He died of a heart attack at the age of 44 because of too much alcohol consumption. Eight years later, Zelda Fitzgerald dies in a fire at Highland Hospital in Asheville, North Carolina. Fitzgerald wrote many short stories and a few novels. Written on Fitzgerald's grave, read So We Beat On, Boats Against the Current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. It is taken from the last sentence from The Great Gatsby. It means whatever we do, our past is always with us. <laughs>